What I love about my discipline is that I would, first of all, I would do it for nothing. I don't tell my employer that. Uh, because what I'm doing is talking with people who have read books that I love about the books that I love. And the other thing that, I, that matters a great deal to me is clear writing. And so I get to explore reading and writing at an intense and exciting level. That's the main thing that I love. Another thing I love about my discipline is that um, it allows me, the study of literature is not like the study of mathematics. The study of literature allows me to interlace with, with what, I'm, uh, what I'm teaching uh, other disciplines like history and, and psychology and theology, painting, music. Um, I, taught, uh, I taught Melville's Moby Dick one year and spent a good two months researching 19th century uh, sailboats and all of the nomenclature of those boats. What is a poop deck? You know, the, and uh, the, exploring also the, uh, one of my favorite poems is about, a, is about a, a hawk and I read books and books and books about falcons and falconry. That is another world altogether and it is really, a, so I try to bring, I'm, I'm lucky in that in the discipline I have, I can choose the books that I want to teach. And so I choose them either because I think they're really bad and I can rain on their parade or because they're really good and show the difference. Uh, essentially, too, the, the chance to explore uh, the subtleties and, and in intricacies of the English language. Um, because the language, the words that we take for granted, the, we, it turns out, for example, in the poem about the falcon that I mentioned, they, he uses, the poet used the word pitch. And everybody in the class could put their hand up and say, I know what pitch means. And, but it doesn't mean that in the way the poem is written. It makes no sense. So I looked up the word pitch in the Oxford English Dictionary. And the Oxford English Dictionary is about 15 volumes like this. There were seven pages of definitions of the word pitch, all the way from music to roofing to cricket to tar. And suddenly we discovered that this, this word is, is a multifaceted gem, if you look at it that way. Others saw it as a word with so many meanings it meant nothing. And so we get a little argument going up. One of the challenges is a, is a basic one, because as I said earlier, um, what I love to teach is reading and writing. And I find that many people have, um, don't have the habit of reading yet. They haven't been read to, um, and they are focused on, on screens and displays and find the the business of reading, especially reading carefully and with uh, depth of appreciation, they find that awkward and uh, boring. And of course it isn't boring. Anybody who's a reader knows it isn't boring, but if you're not a reader, it's really hard. And uh, sometimes they'll get into, they'll get into higher education and university with, a, with with a kind of disability when it comes to uh, when it comes to reading carefully and also writing, um, I spent many years as a as a as a consultant part time for uh, Crown Corporations and Industries in uh, in Saskatchewan, and I did that because uh, managers were saying we have graduates in accountancy, we have graduates in engineering, we have graduates in, in psychology, but I can't trust them to write a letter to a customer because it doesn't make sense and it seems to be written only to the writer and not to the reader. And so that's one of the challenges. And I'm not saying it's literacy. I'm saying it, I think it has to do ultimately with a respect for words and language and the written word, and also respect for communication. That's one of the challenges. The other one, regardless of, of whether or not your reading and writing is up to par, um, is that quite often um, 
people will call a Bachelor of Arts degree, for example, a MIC degree. That with a Bachelor of Arts degree, what kind of job are you going to get? You'll get a job at McDonald's. And um, we in English have the same have the same concern. And students will say, "Look, I, I only take this because I have to. Uh, it's essentially useless." And Useless, in other words, in, in that by, by waiving an English d degree, they feel that they are going to be excluded from employment opportunities and, and the job market. Um, but, as I, as, as I said before, being able to read uh, critically and to formulate an argument and to structure a paragraph and put those forward, which are the kinds of crafts that our, our young people are eventually the best ones, the venture master, will get them more quickly into law school, for example. Uh, the Royal Bank, um, I read in a, a leaflet that was stuck in the front seat of an airplane I was flying on, said that the most important, they want people who have a general liberal arts education because they can teach them banking, but they can't teach them to think. And that's essentially what our discipline brings, and it's a challenge because it doesn't have an immediately and, and obvious practical application. The opportunities for somebody with an English degree, I could list them off with just in 40 years I've noted I've got graduates who are uh, in television, they're in broadcasting, they're in editing, they're in, in uh, newspaper work. I've got a student, a former student right now, who is the managing director of a major theater in Dublin, Ireland, renovating a 16th century building. He has a three-year degree in English and drama. Um, and so they can become teachers. They can do what I did, which was move on into a profession that's probably as rewarding as you could imagine, being able to get up in the morning and go to work and talk to bright young people about what you really love. And uh, so the opportunities, any, any profession in which there is the necessity for appreciating uh, language, for reading critically, for communicating clearly and carefully, you have brought to the table an English degree, you're steps ahead of other people. Uh, the, the, um, the faculty of law, like I said before, will jump at graduates from English departments because here's somebody who can read and write. And lawyers are probably not famous for that. <laughs> At the, at the best time. But for me, and I started out with this, but I think for me the most important thing with an English degree is that you're more likely than not to read to your children.